Hey guys, Mark Shields here. Now I wanted to uh, create a way to contact with those that are interested in the ministry on the island or interested in my family and what we're doing here. And so this, uh, I've set this up so that I can create videos to extend to you guys uh, what we're doing here and, and how the ministry is going. And also just, just life in general, how the family is going. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit today about difficult time that we just went through with my youngest child. So my youngest child is just two years old. His name's Jonah. About three weeks we got back from the continent and he had this sore on his eye. We didn't know what it was. We couldn't quite figure it out, but it kind of went away a week ago on Wednesday. He woke up in the middle of the night and he was having this fever. And when I tried to kind of pick him up, he was in such pain under his arms and around his mouth. He would wake up in the middle of the night on Thursday and Friday. He would just sit there. He couldn't lie down. He was in so much pain that he couldn't lie down. Every time we tried to touch him, uh, he would just cry out in agony. It was absolutely heartbreaking. We thought it was uh, chicken pox. A lot of the children at his school had chicken pox. And he did have a whole lot of red dots all over his body. So I assumed it was chicken pox. And then my wife actually took him down to the hospital on Saturday. The diagnosis was that he had chicken pox. Okay, the next day we had church. And then after church, his eyes were starting to swell up. And he had all this kind of like a red rash all around his mouth, all around his neck. And his eyes were like swelling up and they were getting all pussy and stuff. And I started looking online to see if there was any chicken pox that looked like this. There was absolutely nothing. And I thought, man, this is something else. And so I said, let's go down to the, and we went down to the hospital, to the emergency. It was a Sunday. Generally on the island, not a whole lot of doctors are working on a Sunday. But we get him in and the doctor looks at me and said, oh, there's a child doctor here. I'll go and talk to him. So very fortunately, the child doctor was there with us. The doctor comes in and he looks at him and you know, you can just tell when a doctor's worried. You know, he looks at him and he's just like, wow, he looks at me and he's, he's got to come into hospital. And like, you know, my heart just, just dropped. I was like, uh oh, this is how serious. He goes, yeah, this is serious. And they said, don't worry, we've got it in time, but this is a very serious condition. Um, he's coming into hospital tonight. So straight away, they hospitalized him, um, put him a whole of painkillers. He was in absolute agony, put him in painkillers. And they said, he's going to be okay. Uh, we got it early enough, he's going to be okay. It can be fatal, but he's going to be okay. And so I went home and my wife stayed with him that night. The next day, I had to stay with him in the morning. The hospitalization had started at five o'clock the night before, all the way through, and now it was like 11 o'clock in the morning and no doctor had come to see if he was okay. And I was looking at him and he was getting worse. So his eyes had got bigger and more swollen. There was pus in his eyes. It was all very um, unnerving. It's worrying and I'm, I'm getting, the enemy's talking to me and he's saying, you know, oh, this is it, Mark. You know, sometimes God lets your children die. This could be it. And uh, I just started getting really, really worried, you know. And I was just watching his eyes getting bigger. I'd walked in in the morning, this is what really broke my heart. I, I looked at him and he was just in such pain. He was, couldn't even open his eyes at this stage. And he could hear my voice. He said, Papa, Papa, it is too. Like, are you there, fa Daddy? And I said, yeah, it's me. And he said, Tranquilo, Papa, todo bien. Just broke my heart. He was saying basically, it's okay, Daddy. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, but while he was saying it, it really didn't look like he was going to be okay. So I start praying and I'm like, right, we need some prayer support. So I send out uh, texts to a lot of people just saying, hey, you can, can you pray for us? There's a scripture that says, you know, when we don't know what to pray, that the Spirit of God prays through us, prays for us with indiscernible groanings, too deep to be uttered. You know, I just started praying in tongues. I just, I didn't know what to pray. And I just started praying and praying. And I sent out some text messages and asked people to pray. And my mother got up. Uh, it was early in the morning for her, but she sent out messages to all her friends. They started praying. I got the church praying, another church on the island. But I felt in my spirit, go out and do something because all the nurses were coming in. And every time they'd come in, I'd say, have you seen anything like this? And they're like, no, I've never seen anything like this. And they all had this really worried look on their face. Like they didn't want to comment. They didn't want to say anything. It's like, man, where is this doctor? He's supposed to be here and he's not here. I start getting upset. You know, it's like something's got to be done. I'm not just going to sit here and watch him get worse and worse while no doctor comes. Because now it had been 15 hours or so and he wasn't getting better. So I walk out into the hospital and I say, hey, look, someone's got to look at my son. I can't just sit there. I'd do something if I could, but I'm not a doctor. I need a doctor to have a look at my son. Another doctor comes in and says, well, I'm not a pediatric doctor, but I'll have a look at him. So he looks at, comes in, looks at him. He's like, once again, you can kind of see this fear coming over his face. He goes, all right, we'll bring him out to the main place so that we can keep an eye on him. So they take him out and my wife comes down at that stage. We're both looking at him. I'm just praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. And then I felt this shift in the spirit. 
And I just knew that I knew that I knew that he was going to be okay. I, do, I wasn't praying from a place of defense anymore. I was praying from a place of faith. And it was just that compounding prayers from around the world as people prayed for this situation. So from that point on, I realized that he's going to be okay. We had to stay in the uh, hospital for seven days looking after him. Now, after that scripture that says, the Lord helps us pray when we don't know what to pray, says, and, and we know that all things work to the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So he doesn't just help us to pray, but he uses those prayers to turn everything to our good. And we actually turn go from the defense to the offense. So one thing on my heart when I watched my son in pain, I was like, there are children around in pain who are also struggling uh, and they don't have a father to look after them. They don't have a mother to look after them. They're just in pain. There's orphans, uh, tr human traffickers and stuff that are abusing these children. The enemy wants to attack me. We can attack him. So what can I do? I can, with a click of a button, I can support a ministry that helps children, right? So the enemy attacks my child. Now I'm going to attack what he's doing with the children. And I can do that through the internet. I can look up a good re reputable ministry and now I can attack him at the other end. Not only that, while we're there, we have to share a room for, with one young boy. He's about 15 years old, suffering from panic attacks. So he comes in and I pray for him. I said, you're going to be okay. Let's pray. So he's actually from a, the ch children's home, a place where the children in Rapa Nui uh, stay if they don't have parents or they don't have parents or they have parents who are alcoholics or parents that can't look after them. They go to the children's home. Now, the children's home is a tough place and that's probably a reason why he's having these panic attacks. Anyway, we pray for him, uh, share the gospel with him. And then this, his, his minder, if you like, the guy from the children's home comes in. He recognizes me. Say, hey, you used to come here and play the guitar and preach. And uh, if Amos is watching, he'll remember that we used to do that. Um, and I said, yeah, that was me. And I said, these days we're going to the prison. Um, and I talked to him about, you know, Revelation. He said, what if we do the least of these when we visit people in the prison or in the hospital we're visiting Jesus and he says he's not a Christian but I can tell he kind of likes the idea of Christianity and he just says hey we would love you guys to come down to the uh, children's school or, or the the children's home the, the people basically what I prayed in my heart about orphans and things not having a father God opens the door so that we can go down. He said, we'd love you. Here's my phone number. So now I've got his phone number and I'm going to call him up so that we can go down and uh, share the gospel down at the children's home. Alongside that, we're also beside a woman who is suffering from cancer. She's about 50 years old and she can't breathe properly. She's talking to all the nurses and obviously the nurses, they've got to do their job and stuff, uh, but she's trying to make light of her situation. So I'm walking to the bathroom. I walk past her and I, I come over to her and I said, are you, are you okay? And she says, yeah, yeah. And I said, are you, are you worried? She said, yeah. And I said, can I pray for you? And so I pray for her. And as soon as I pray for her, she's just like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I said, look, I'm right beside you. If you need any prayer, I'm right here. Just call on me. So during the night, maybe three or four in the morning, she starts coughing. She can't breathe. And she's, she's, she's just coughing and coughing and coughing. And like the nurses and doctors, they can't really do anything. They just, you know, they've got the machines already. I went over and I said, I want to pray for you again. And I just felt it was a spiritual attack on her. So I put my hand on her and I just uh, rebuked the demonic entity that was kind of suffocating her. As soon as I did this, she just lies back, stops coughing and goes to sleep. Well, a few days later, I bump into her and she says, oh, thank you so much. I came in and I just felt like there was this heaviness on my, on my chest. But when you prayed for me, uh, it left. And so I invited her to church and she said, She's going to come to church. So praise God for that. What the enemy wanted for evil, God will use for good. Anything the enemy does to you through prayer and petition, petition uh, make your request known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And it, it's true. Often we think that worrying is praying. Worrying is not praying. Worrying is worrying. Praying is praying. And so we need to get our worries and voice them to God. And so that's what I did. And through that, God turned it around. So I'm very, very happy today because uh, the Lord has brought my son home. Going to be uh, recuperating over the next few weeks just because he had so much antibiotics and so much sickness. But he's well. We're able to touch people in the hospital. We've got an opportunity now to share at the children's home. I'm going to be sponsoring some of these uh, people who fight human trafficking. And so everything the enemy did, he, he's going to pay for it. We are the offensive force in this war. Jesus says, you know, uh, the, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. 
and we need to be people of attack. The enemy, he wants to get us worried. He wants to get us off track. But we've got to keep our mind set on the things above, set on uh, the coming of our Lord Jesus, set on when we finally meet him. And I just want to encourage anyone here who's going through some similar things right now. I know a lot of you guys are hurting. I know a lot of you guys have got lots of work on. Um, some of you may be suffering from separations from spouses. Some of you might be suffering from sick children as well. Just in the middle of it, pray with faith, knowing that God's going to turn it somehow, somehow for your good. He's going to turn it for his glory and for your good. Because all things, not some things, not most things, all things work to the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Yeah, and I also want to want to say we're under a lot of warfare, spiritual warfare here on the island. There is massive syndicate of witches and warlocks that are against the church here and basically dominated the landscape for a long, long time here on Easter Island. We appreciate your prayers. We need your prayers. We appreciate them. There's not one church on the island that's managed to advance on this island uh, to a degree that, that, that should be. Uh, this island is full of idolatry, ancestor worship. There are altars, 270 altars that ba basically encircle this island. And if you can understand, an altar is the thing that God hated most in the Old Testament. When the, uh, when the Israelites went into the promised land, God often judged them according to what they did with the altars and the high places. Because the altars are doors, are spiritual doors, calling in the demonic into the land. So if you pollute the land with that stuff, they will take authority and then they will destroy the nation. And so we're dealing with a lot of idolatry, a lot of altars. And uh, of course, with all those altars, it, it draws a lot of witches and warlocks to the island uh, from Chile, from the mainland. And we're at war. It's a spiritual war. It's not against flesh and blood, but we're at war. The, the scripture says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle against principalities and powers. And I have no doubt that my son's sickness is related to um, a spiritual attack on my family. So we would appreciate your prayers. We know that God will uh, prevail. This is part of us winning by me asking you guys to pray. Pray for Easter Island. Pray for this church. Uh, Aka Haripuri is the name of our church. It means uh, anchor church. Anchor church. And uh, we want it to be an anchor for the people who want to know Jesus here on this island. Jesus is our anchor and we are getting people to come here and get to know him. Yeah, I want to share it with you. So this is why I have created this channel as a way to extend to you guys what's happening on the island with the ministry and everything else that's happening. I'm going to get deep <laughs> over the next few weeks. I'm going to get deep into what we've been going through and what the Lord has taught me. Uh, specifically about spiritual warfare, about dealing with witches and warlocks, uh, about dream and dreams, dream interpretation, how God talks, all that fun stuff. So there are 8,000 people on Easter Island, which means it's possible to reach every single one of them and document it. And that's what I hope to do. I really, in the future, want to do ministry as a full time and just preach the gospel. That's my desire. If God allows it to happen, so be it. Uh, for now, we are running a tour agency on Easter Island. And that's how we make our money. And then we're doing ministry part time with my wife, uh, visiting the prison, running a church, visiting the hospital. And now we're going to be visiting the, the children's school. So praise God. I'd really love to finish this with a prayer. And I pray, hope that you can pray along. Father God, I extend uh, your love and grace that you have shown us here on the island, uh, the church. Lord God, I extend it to every single person watching i pray that your grace your love and your peace would be upon each one of them anyone else who's suffering with sick children with uh, broken hearts divorces different forms of attack from the enemy lord god i pray that you would give them a heart for prayer lord god and that they lord jesus through that prayer you would turn everything for the good of those who love you every single person who loves you who's watching lord god give them hope give them understanding that this is a season and that they will come out the uh, other side uh, with you. I thank you, Jesus. Love you. Honor you.